Hello everyone. My name is Caroline. I am in my final year of undergrad at Colorado State, double majoring in math and statistics. Today I would like to share a little bit about some research I conducted over the summer with Dr. Brooke Anderson that addresses a common barrier that our users encounter, particularly in the early stages of learning the language. Over the years, the bulk of enhancements made to the R environment are in the form of user-contributed extensions to the base functionality of R. In colloquial speech, we refer to these extensions as packages. We hope these 10 simple rules help you find and select R packages more efficiently so that you spend less time searching and more time coding. Sometimes it's helpful to conceptualize things by way of analogy. There are numerous comparisons between concepts in computing and cooking, so we'll add another here. You can think of R packages as kitchen tools. Imagine you are the chef, base R is the kitchen, and packages are like the special gadgets you use to cook and bake new recipes. If you have a certain task, chances are a relevant package exists that will help you accomplish it. In fact, there are tens of thousands of R packages, in part due to the open source nature of R. So the question then becomes, how do you go about finding a package when there are so many options with great variation among them, even when they provide similar tools? In particular, our users, especially new ones, often struggle to find a package to accomplish a certain task and then choose a package to perform that task. So start by considering your purpose. You should first ask yourself, do I even need a package? If your task is simple or reasonable, given your knowledge and skills, you may not need a package at all. One advantage of coding your recipe from scratch is that you will know exactly what it does, and so it will be easier to manage. Another advantage of not using a package is that since packages evolve over time, you may find that changes and improvements to package functionality cause some defects in your script that you will have to decipher and fix later. If your task is common, extensive, or unusual, you may decide you need a package. dplyr is an example of a very popular package that has transformed a common task, data manipulation. Carrot is an example of a package that helps with an extensive task, machine learning, and Twitter is an example of a package for a task that is somewhat unusual, tweeting from R. It is a good idea to identify your current limitations and the desired properties of the package you need. You can also list domain-specific keywords that will narrow your search. And if you can't quite put your finger on what you want to do, this op often happens with data visualization tasks. It can be helpful to search for some examples first. Now, you should find and collect your options. Seasoned R users might have some kind of short list of go-to places to search, but this stage can be cumbersome for new users. So, we'll break down a few starting points. First, don't forget about the packages you've been introduced to in your journey learning R so far. A lot of times, these more common packages for general purposes are combined and contained within the tidyverse. These packages are usually mentioned in introductory R books, 
courses, and tutorials. And actually, these materials are frequently available at no cost to the user. Second, browsing options online is often effective. As you may know, Googling some keywords tagged with in R returns many results, but this approach can also feel undirected and lead to frustration at times. So, for a more directed way to go about it, you can start by looking through lists of packages categorized by the tasks they perform. CRAN task views is a more generalized list, and BIOC views is the computational biology analog. You can also filter and search on other sites listed here. These will come up in later rules. Here are some snapshots. On the left, CRAN task views, and on the right, BIOC views. As you can see, you can click on a given category and go from there. And lastly, I'll emphasize that the R community is very passionate and active. They have a pretty substantial presence on Twitter, and many tweets are related to packages, like announcing new releases, for example. Blogs are another way to find out information about packages out there. RStudio has a blog that introduces interesting new R packages and posts lists of the top packages in different categories. Along with that, packages are often a main topic at R-related conferences, and there are several of those, RStudio and UseR being the largest. And if you can't attend these conferences, videos are usually available online at least after the fact. The R community has also popularized gatherings that are less structured than conferences, and some R packages have actually been developed at these events. You can also watch out for conferences in your field to find out which packages others are using in your area. And don't forget that not all packages are publicly shared, so if you have a specific task in your research area, check with colleagues to see if they have a private package that they'd share with you. And related to that, you should now check to see how the package has been shared. Repositories are the primary way in which the stable release versions of our packages are shared because they regularly check code and manage webs of dependencies. You can basically think of a repository as a warehouse for tools before they're shipped to your kitchen. There are also code sharing sites with fewer restrictions than repositories and other ways to share packages beyond that. CRAN, Bioconductor, and ROpenSci are the three main repositories. CRAN is the largest and most established with the most packages. Bioconductor only hosts packages that are relevant to computational biology and bioinformatics. And ROpenSci has a select subset of packages that ha have gone through a special peer review process GitHub is a public version control platform that is also effective for hosting and distributing packages. Keep in mind that a package is often actually available in multiple of these places, and you can install packages with R code based on where you are calling them from. Oftentimes, developers will host a package on GitHub but then publish the stable release version on a formal repository. An alternative way to share a package is through a zip file. This is most common when people want to control who uses their package. You can now move on to exploring the availability and quality of help. 
Documentation and help resources are either embedded in the package's source code or they are not. You can call documentation embedded in the source code from the console or explore it using the RStudio IDE. A help file for either the package itself or specific functions within it is the minimum standard form of documentation and can be helpful for narrower questions you might have. However, if you are not comfortable with the larger picture of a package, vignettes are a very nice long form documentation that tell you the package's purpose in context of a problem and then walk you through very detailed examples with code. Some packages have tutorials from the learner package embedded within them so you can easily access an interactive form of help. Depending on the package, the learner tutorial might either be exploratory or structured in its content. Some packages have a website created through PackageDown that neatly collects any and all forms of these documentation into an organized website online and this platform is also quite nice for branding. And on the other hand, there are numerous resources beyond a package's source code. Our documentation is a good site with consolidated help resources for most packages. Some packages have their own comprehensive online books, which are often published through the R package Bookdown and others have online tutorials and code demos that are sometimes even written or taught by the maintainer. Galleries and cheat sheets are nice ways to get help, especially if you are a visual learner. Galleries can be accessed online and cheat sheets can be accessed online or from within the RStudio IDE. You can often subscribe to mailing lists such as our help, or some packages have their own mailing lists. You should consider that you might need to ask for help at some point when using a package, so it's a good idea to check some of the online community forums to see if the package you're interested in using gets a lot of attention on those. And at this stage, it is helpful to quantify how established it is. So you may be wondering now how a package stacks up in terms of popularity. Our documentation has a leaderboard for different stats, like newest updates and most used keywords for packages. There are numerous metrics on the site on which the package has been shared. For example, on the GitHub page for a package, you can see the number of versions and downloads. There's also a nice rating system where users can star, follow, or clone a package that they like, and GitHub keeps track of this so you can see. If a package has a lot of reverse dependencies, meaning a lot of other packages rely on it, this is a really good sign of widespread usage and reliability. Also, keep in mind that a lot of these metrics are indicators of popularity and most useful for general purpose packages. These indicators are good for investigating packages individually, but what if you'd like to compare a few directly? And conveniently, there's actually a package called Package Metrics, which helps you choose which package to use in this way. Here is some output for comparing different data visualization packages using package metrics. You can see, for example, when each was published, its number of downloads last month, whether it has a vignette, and its number of re reverse dependencies, among other things. And now would be a good time to seek evidence of peer acceptance and review. 
Even though repositories all check code, sometimes their processes overlook the content. Peer review addresses this and can give you an idea of whether a package is impactful and useful in science. Published articles about either a package itself or those that mention a package used in their research undergo a traditional peer review process and the journals listed here are good places to search for these articles. You can also see where a package has been cited by searching keywords followed by our package in Google Scholar. Or you can also look for digital object identifiers associated with certain GitHub repositories. If a package is on the ROpenSci repository, you can be sure that it has been specially peer reviewed. And lastly, there are many series of books on R packages from very credible scientific, scientific publishers, and you should check into these. Next, find out who developed it. You can find out who created a package in the description file or other places online. Some packages are written by more than one person, and you can also see the different roles people had in the development process, such as author, creator, maintainer, contributor, and funder. If you don't recognize any of these names, you can search their affiliations within academia, government, or industry. Sometimes packages associated with government agencies like USGS or an industry like RStudio have more regulations and incentives behind their creation, and so they might be more robust. It can also be helpful to explore authors' package development portfolios and histories to see if they have any packages on there that you recognize or have used and liked in the past. And sometimes it can also be a good idea to see when a package has been created and if it has been created by a large team. Um, this can signal potential funding and community involvement and overall enthusiasm for this type of project, which is a good sign. And after that, you should see how it's actually developed. There are four aspects of package development that you should consider when selecting one. First, look into the quality and reputation of its dependencies. Then, see if the developer uses unit testing to ensure the code does what it intends to do. Then, especially for packages developed by large teams, make sure that they used continuous integration um, because this means that different components um, have been put together well and regularly checked, and this is important for the project's overall quality. Also, responsible developers will use version control as sort of a time capsule for tracking and organizing changes. Most of these things can be checked on GitHub. And lastly, among other indicators, you can see a package's development status summary through these badges here on its GitHub page, which, as you can see, all of these indicators actually harken back to other rules as well. Badges are actually clickable and link to detailed pages associated with what, whatever they concern. And if you are still now not sure if you want to use a package, or even if you're trying to just decide between a few, put it to the test. And if you remember back to rule four, using the help files for specific functions and vignettes to get an overall feel for the package is quite helpful. You should first test the executable code examples with the provided sample data and then try to translate that to working with your own data. 
In this case, you can check to see if your data types are compatible with what the package's functions expect. And during this process, you can also find out if the packages you are currently using are compatible with the new package you might want to add to your workflow. For instance, Bioconductor uses special object classes that don't play very nicely with Tidyverse tools. But don't forget, there are also packages like Broom and BioBroom that can alleviate some problems that arise when working with an odd combination of tools. And finally, if you haven't yet found what you're looking for, consider developing your own package. You certainly don't have to be an expert to develop one. Going back to rule one, if your code recipe is from scratch, you can easily make a package, which is simply just a collection of specialty functions. Functions are helpful if you find yourself repeatedly copying and pasting code. In practice, this is known as violating the dry, do not repeat yourself principle. Personal R packages are a pretty fun concept and can be comprised of a collection of tasks you often do in your research or even just some specialty tweaks to a ggplot graphic, for example, that you'd like to save and use again. Even though you might not intend to share your package with others, be kind to your future self by following best practices just as you would hope other developers would have considered when they were making a package. And also be kind to your current self and use existing tools to streamline the process. Those listed here are some of the popular packages to help you make packages. And the RStudio IDE has a nicely contained project directory framework that will get you on your way to making an organized tool to solve your data science problem. Now that we've reached the end of these rules, I've included some figures so you can see how they all come together with the different resources I mentioned. I will just scroll through these, but I encourage you to pause and have a closer look around. I hope these 10 simple rules gave you a better idea of how to find and select R packages. Thank you for listening and happy searching.